The Wim streamers deliver great value for money and are upgraded by many using an external DAC. But what if you replace the original power supply with a better one? Although it is announced as power supplies for the Wim Pro Plus, this video is also about other audio gear that can use external power supplies. Of course the standard Wim Pro, but also the DACs and streamers that need an external 5V DC power supply. There is a reasonable awareness that a better power supply increases the sound quality. Unfortunately the linear power supply is always seen as the better solution. That can be the case, although sometimes a switch mode power supply might be the better option. The national grid carries a high AC voltage. In Europe that's 220 to 240 volts AC, in other countries like the USA it's 110 to 120 volts AC. But electronics works at a low DC voltage. It is the function of a power supply to reduce the voltage down to 3 to 60 volts and convert it from alternating current to direct current. Many logic chips work at 3 volts DC while amplifiers might want up to 60 volts DC or even higher. The most popular power supplies work either according to switch mode or linear technique. Let's see what that is. Three of the power supplies in this test are switch mode power supplies, often abbreviated to SMPS. As the name implies, a switch mode power supply switches on and off. It does that at a very high frequency, so there never is a big current heating up a transformer. That way the input voltage can be very high, so switch mode power supplies can handle a grid voltage lower than 110 volts AC to slightly over 240 volts AC. This way manufacturers only have to make one power supply for worldwide distribution. Another advantage is that more than 90% of the power you put in at the grid side comes out at the lower voltage DC side feeding the electronics. Since no large transformer is needed, just a small isolated transformer suffice, the switch mode power supply can be very small and light compared to the traditional linear power supply. But unless designed very well, the high switching frequency causes noise on the DC output usually inaudible directly since the switching frequency is too high to hear, but it can interfere seriously with audio electronics. Especially the DA converter circuit is highly sensitive to noise and interference. That is why replacing a cheap switch mode power supply with an audio grade power supply with DAX always increases the sound quality. But also amplifiers can get unstable when such a high frequency leaks in. The linear power supply uses a transformer to convert the grid's AC voltage to a lower voltage, after which it is converted to DC. The transformer is simply put two coils placed close to each other, made of copper wire. The AC current in the primary winding creates an alternating magnetic field. The secondary side has a different number of windings and the ratio between the two defines the voltage change. So if you have it convert 230 to 7 volts AC, the ratio has to be 33. After rectifying and regulating the 7 volts AC, the result is about 5 volts DC. If a higher DC voltage is needed, a higher AC voltage is needed and thus a lower ratio. The transformer has a large impact on the manufacturing price since it's made of copper and is relatively expensive and heavy. So production costs and shipping costs are high compared to switch mode power supplies. And the efficiency varies between 55 and 65 percent. Furthermore, a transformer is relatively slow and therefore needs buffering in the form of large capacitors. Good audio grade capacitors with sufficient capacitance also come at a price. The advantage is that there is no switching noise.
I'm often asked if a battery isn't the best choice. Well, it isn't. There are of course differences between batteries, based on the technology used and the quality chosen. But in general, batteries have a high internal resistance that impedes fast current delivery. Next to that, batteries are noisier than a good linear power supply. And batteries are less convenient since they have to be recharged and they lose their capacity over 500 to 1000 charges. A better variant is a supercapacitor power supply. A supercapacitor is a cell that can store a large charge very quickly and can deliver it just as quickly. But a larger charge for a capacitor is still nothing compared to a battery. You can see a supercapacitor as a device in between a battery and a capacitor. The Upton Audio Ultracaps 1.2 power supply I use for the Ether Regen in my setup 2 is such a supercapacitor based power supply. Including VAT it costs around 500 euros and is capable of supplying 1.1 amps. Switch mode power supplies can supply high currents very fast, clearly faster than comparable linear power supplies. For digital circuits this can be very beneficiary, for analog circuits like audio such a high speed isn't needed, not to that degree anyway. Since digital audio is not sensitive to noise and interference as long as it stays in the digital domain, generally I prefer a good switch mode power supply on all digital devices like switches, DDCs and DAC-less streamers. For streamers with built-in DACs, it would be very nice if the digital audio and system electronics was done by a good switch mode power supply and the analog audio electronics by a linear power supply or a very high quality switch mode power supply. Some high end streaming DACs work this way. And some DIYers do this by feeding a small board computer like a Raspberry Pi by switch mode power supply and feeding the bolt on sound card aka DAC from a linear power supply. But in the more affordable ready to use products that offer the possibility for a single external power supply, I would prefer a linear power supply preferably one that can deliver more current than needed. After this long introduction, let's look at the influence of power supplies on the Beam Pro Plus. To research this, I test four audio grade power supplies. The iFi iPower 2, the Allo Nirvana, the PD Creative and the S-Booster BOTW PMP Eco 1st edition. And of course the Wim power supply that came with the Pro Plus. Which by the way is identical to the power supply that comes with the standard Pro version. All power supplies are 5 volts. The Wim is specified to deliver 2 amps, the iPower 2 2.5 amps, the Nirvana 2.85 amps, the PD Creative 2.5 amps and the S-Booster 1.75 amps. The newer 2nd edition S-Booster BOTW PMP Eco is specified at 3 amps and would have been a more appropriate choice, but I didn't have it at hand. I was interested in the capabilities of the power supplies to deliver current. With no load all five deliver slightly over 5 volts DC. Please note that this spreadsheet uses a decimal comma. At 0.5 amps current all five still are at or about 5 volts. At 1 amp the beam is over half a volt down, the S booster a quarter of a volt and the rest are still at around 5 volts. At 2 amps the beam is already 3 quarters of a volt down, only the Nirvana is still at almost 5 volts. But then at 3 amps the beam and the Nirvana switch off while the other three are around 4.5 volts. Even at 4 amps the iPower 2 and the S-Booster still maintain 4.3 volts while the PD Creative can only deliver 3.6 volts. This of course is using power supplies beyond their specifications and they are static measurements and no guarantee for a fast current delivery. But look at the S-Booster that while specified at 1.75 ohms 
still delivers 4.5 ohms at 3 amps. The iFi iPower 2 specified at 2.5 amps still deliver 4.3 volts at 4 amps. Voltage regulators inside the beam might still manage to get a decent 3 volts the working voltage for most components. Evaluating 5 power supplies is quite a job. I therefore used my set of 1 so the differences were as clear as possible. You don't want other factors influence the test. In this setup the Air AX520 amplifier drives the PMC FACT12 signature loudspeakers on stack audio OVA70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The network connection comes from the Zistel GS1900-10HP switch and is filtered by the Network Acoustics Eno. The Wimplo Pros was connected to the amp over Grim Audio TPR RCA cable. The Synology DS1819 Plus NAS with DX517 extender running minim server was used as DNLA server. When reviewing equipment I always take into account the price of the device on the test, in other words the relative sound quality compared to other products in that price range. I am going to leave that approach a bit here and judge the sound quality more absolute. This leads to a less kind description. I think that is necessary to give a good description and make this test doable. Let's start with the power supply that came with the Pro Plus. Although there is a stereo image it is relatively shallow, not very emerging and there is very limited focus. Microdynamics are poor, transients slow and pace and rhythm lack involvement. Lows are woolly, lack any texture, mids are harsh as are the highs but sibilance is fairly well controlled. Again this is an absolute judgement, not relative to other products in the same price bracket. Then the iFi iPower 2. Right away the stereo image is more inviting, more involving. There is more focus, better microdynamics and the lows have some more detail. Mids sound somewhat rounder, less harsh, highs are more open. Sibilants sound different but still not optimal. The Elo Nirvana sounds about the same as the iFi iPower 2. Too hard to find a difference in sound quality. The PD Creative Super Low Noise PSU brings a lot of life into the music. The stereo image now is rather evolving. The sound comes clearly free from the loudspeakers. Microdynamics are clearly better than the three switch mode power supplies. Mids are still somewhat harsh but less than with the switch mode power supplies. Lows clearly improved, got more authority and texture. Sibilance is better controlled. The S Booster BO2W Eco PMP sounds slightly less dynamic but has a lovely mid range. Violins and voices sound so much better. The stereo image is wider and deeper with clearly better focus. This is the most involving sound I heard coming from the Pro Plus. Where the Pro Plus with standard power supply ranks high up in setup 3, not setup 1 as I wrongly stated in the review, with the iFi iPower 2 and the Allo Nirvana it ranks at the top of my setup 3. With the PD Creative it enters setup 2 just, while with the S Booster it ranks in the bottom quarter of setup 2. Investing in a better power supply does pay. It depends on the rest of your stereo setup, your ears and your budget what power supply is the best choice for you. But if you would buy a Wien Pro Plus with S Booster you spend 569 euros while a Blue Sound Note costs 575 euros. If you already own a Wien Pro Plus 
the S booster is a good spend, but wouldn't the blue sound note be a better starting choice? I would watch the reviews of the Wim and the Note again to see what matches your preferences best. Which brings me to the end of this video. As usual there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next Friday. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.